the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. How good is that? It is Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie for your Wednesday podcast today. We're talking about withdrawal symptoms after the old T Swizzle train has been through the country. Oh man, where do we go from here? How do we recover? I'm feeling man, flat as a tack. Just man. give me one more hit, man. I just yeah. want one more hit. Are we out of the woods here? Are we Actually, out of the woods? April 19, you'll have a whole new album of hits. Is that right? Is that the drop date? See, yeah. Actually, so she'll tour that. Will that be an extra era on the tour? Well, I don't think she'll go back through all of the eras again. Mm. I think this kind of extravaganza is done. Interesting to find out also the last concert of the tour is in Vancouver, Canada. Be crazy not to get the team over there to celebrate what? the end of the era's tour. I think My that... favourite was her, the Shaq one. Hmm? Sorry, the mate? Shaq, the Shaq era. <laughs> okay. Good. And oh, with that, we no. say, that, Tom, oh, that's Tom. not that's really bad, good. considering no, we'll that she's out, another we? female artist. Yeah. Yeah. That's not um, great. I'd have heaps of other jokes. Um, let me think of some. Um, 1989, um, um, Midnight's, Folklore, um, Shakira. Um, <laughs> um, oh, what and about and you, you get Shakira out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Where, where does she come from? Hmm? Shakira, Shakira. My God. hips don't lie. Alrighty. Oh we can that go. would be. I don't know if no if this is really happening. Tommy, can we clean this up in any way? Or is, yeah, I mean, it's not often we would air bolted. The somebody losing their mind. Oh, they know it's at the party. I've been um, clear at all. Oh, 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 I was a, uh, a bit sunburnt. Um, oh, so I'm in my aloe vera. Oh! That things. is very good. It's funny, actually. I was really oh, yeah. enjoying Where were her. You, um, when she wore those those pants during her pant era. Um, pant era. Okay. <laughs> and you bring pant era yeah. out with Taylor Swift. So bad, Tom. Any pant era in. in the system? Tom, I, doubt it. I don't yeah. even know. I don't know. Kate's on board. Finally, you know what? My um, my son at the moment, which is interesting, has a over to you has a chest infection. Oh, here we go. My son, (laughs) my son at the moment's got a chest infection. I went to the doctor and I said it doesn't seem like much, and he said no, but it's a bit more severer than we thought. It's an era severer. It's severe. The word severe. There's no such era. thing as severe. 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 Se- it, more severe. severe. You say more yeah, severe. Mean, you never say severe. It's a bit more severe than I thought. So you take. If severe. I heard someone say severe, <laughs> I would think <laughs> you're a moron. Okay, now you're feeling left out because you don't have an era joke. I don't do the so era you're jokes, the only mate. One that doesn't. That's, Kate, that's one of the symptoms. Yep. The withdrawal <laughs> symptoms is being a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the podcast. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Made a great moment as we're celebrating Taylor Swift, who has now left the country, took off yesterday for Singapore. But a moment that I saw last night on a um, on a TikTok, mate, and I, I just think this guy has nailed it. Uh, he knows that his wife is a big Taylor Swift fan, or his wife, his girlfriend is a big Taylor Swift fan. So you know what he did, mate? He waited for that moment in a love story where it talks... Can we play the original, Leno? Have you got that there? These are the lyrics to the song, Fitz. So what do you reckon he did? He waited for that moment in front of 82,000 people and he pulled out a ring and said, Marry me, Julia. It's amazing to see everybody watching Taylor Swift and then all of a sudden the phones just turn around, the lights are on this guy. What's, what's interesting, he's wearing sort of a, a white cowboy hat with sort of tassels on it, which is cute. So he takes his cowboy hat down, off and then he gets down on one knee, pulls out a ring and says, Marry me, Juliet. Oh, God. <laughs> You're into it, mate. You're like, you're like, you're caught up in the room. Fitzy is speechless. He's caught up in how emotional the moment would have been. Uh, well, it's you know, if you, it's obviously more for her, isn't it? I suppose. Hmm? <laughs> I mean, he's wearing the Eras tour and a white and a white cowboy hat. So I think, I think he's a big fan as well. I think he's a big. I mean, besides, I know what you. Your perfect proposal would be for you to organise, or sorry, for BJ to propose to you through a flash mob. I reckon that's what you'd love. Yeah, I would love Maybe that. singing this song. And when I saw, 
When I saw this story last night, it just reminded me of one thing. That a team member has actually done a very similar thing without the 82,000 people there. Leno, you used a Taylor Swift song to propose. Yeah, I did. It was only two people on bad, a balcony. Bad blood? <laughs> no, it was not bad vibes, and it wasn't Shake It Up either. But, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I used... Um, Paint the picture. Where are you? are okay. on a balcony? We're on a balcony yeah. at Hamilton Island, oh. um, because... Because Jade had met Taylor Swift there. Oh, for the Nova oh, Hamilton Island yeah. tour, yeah. And then we were friends for many years, and many years later, uh, when the Lover album came out, was when we got together. Yeah, this is hot. So initially it was the Lover song, but then this, do you know, there's a song called Paper Rings. Yep. Oh. So did Marry you, you pa- with Paper Rings? Oh. And I got. Because you couldn't afford the diamond. No, I didn't afford a, a diamond. Ori- you did, did a bit of origami. I got my sister to do origami and made a paper ring. And Great. bloody ripped this song on the Bluetooth speaker and uh, proposed with a paper ring. Oh, See? my God. That is... So if you can find the right lyrics of... Oh, look at the phone booth here, at Leno. Everyone's clapping. Thanks. That is awesome. So your sister does a bit of origami. <laughs> yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> That is awesome. Have you still got the origami ring? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I haven't got it. Jade's yeah. got it. In fact, we were doing a spring clean the other day, and she had a panic because she couldn't. She hadn't find seen it for a year. No, I got and it. She was like, oh, I need to find the ring. I need to find it. I need to find it. Well, and it's not worth anything. Oh, sentimental, yeah. Yeah, she was it's out of sorts. It is sentimental, for yeah. Recycling night, you know. And has she still got the paper? Will she wear the paper ring on the wedding day? I don't know. Maybe. Have Actually, you got a Taylor Swift song to walk into your wedding to? Probably this one, I'm guessing. I don't know. We haven't discussed that far. Let's chat about it, mate. Okay. Let's chat about it. Because that. then then she gets to choose her own ring now, is that correct? Uh yeah, I had I did have a spare. I said, here's your paper ring. By the way, I did get you a real one. <laughs> And yeah. I gave her the real one, and I kind of said, "I don't really. Uh, you've never spoken to anyone. She doesn't hadn't spoken to anyone about what a yeah. ring she wanted. So I didn't know what to get. So I just got one, and I was like, well, this is. We can take it back. I checked with the guy. If we go in the next yeah. nineteen days, can we, take us back. we can. Re- <laughs> He's it. good like that, my mate Michael Hill. <laughs> he does a good job, doesn't he? Um, but she's stuck with that one. Oh, Leno, what man? Go. That's a love story right there. Thanks, thanks so much, Leno. Thank you for sharing. Just oh, you're welcome. Leno and Jade and the pets. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Taylor Swift is gone. She's gone to Singapore and there's a lot of people sighing or breathing a heavy relief that it's all over, it's done and dusted. Other people, I did not know this, but do you know that there are, you can get withdrawal symptoms from something that when your emotions are so high. Yeah, it's got to be a come down, doesn't there? And you're so excited that there can be a bit of a come down and there's symptoms that are happening. 13, 20, 4, 10, if you know some that are suffering from these withdrawal symptoms, I would love to hear from you. Yeah, I, surely it has to be adrenaline, Fitzy. Yeah. Like the, the constant running on adrenaline. What am I going to wear? Oh, my goodness, she's in the country. It's true. Scrolling through Instagram. Where is she now? What's going to go on? It's almost nervous energy, isn't it? Yeah. The post, post-Swift syndrome. Well, well you, you went to two shows over the weekend, mm. Kate, and, um, you know, you were, you were so excited Monday morning morning, but the audio of you in the office afterwards is just, it's crazy. What? Have you got some Have of it there, got, mate? Are you kind yeah. of that you can Leno's, record Leno's in Leno's got a grab for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one's died. Uh, that sounds like... Um, like no, Monday, so no that, was, that was you guys telling me I had to do rap on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift, um, well, she sung the lyrics, hold on to the memories, they will hold on to you. But for some Swifties, it's become really, really difficult with post-concert amnesia being a real thing. So... Okay, so there is a an associate professor of psychology at the State University of New York that has said that this is this happens regularly when someone is faced with a situation with highly charged emotions. Yeah. So it's not just Taylor Swift concerts. People often forget their first dance at a wedding, for instance, because there is so much excitement. Um, there's so many sort of chemicals mm. going through your system. Mm. Um, and she's saying that we're stressed out. We're r- running away from the bear or we're watching Taylor Swift. Do you know what? I reckon it started at a really young age. She remember you'd wake up on Christmas morning and you'd go to the under the tree and there was a couple of gifts there. You'd open the ones with your name on them and then you'd look around and you'd go, no more presents? 
No more presents? The build-up and the excitement of Christmas to that point of no more presents. Man, I'll never forget that fall. I don't think that's it anything. It hit me so I don't hard. think it's anything like this. I, I think cried and cried and cried. I kids was crying. Spoiled children. So. I was crying. I was crying. <laughs> Nicole Booze, who went to the Melbourne Boozy. show, that's her last name, Booze. She said it's like an out of body experience. It's to me, it was as if it didn't really happen. Oh my god. She goes, I know it did happen because I looked at my bank account. It was nine hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> had gone from it. But she said a lot of people are having this out of body experience. I know I was there, but it feels like it was a dream. A post-concert amnesia is real. Yeah, I can imagine that. Oh, look, I think I, I am somewhat glad that that's out of the diary now. Yeah. <laughs> because there was a lot of hype around it a and of a lot of organising um, to do. But I, I have to say, there have been moments when I was packing up all the beads in our lounge room the other day and putting them back in the box and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> And thought I won't need those for a while. Time to put them back in the fridge. Um, Um, And uh, (laughs) where you keep them? (laughs) Is that what you mean? I don't know. I I need to sterilise these again. (laughs) Put them in. Boil the jug. Do you know what? (laughs) Anyone for a cuppa? (laughs) Do you know what? Okay, I'm moving on. I felt sad that our house had to put the beads away yeah. and that we wouldn't have that lovely... Bead time. Bead time oh, experience you know, together. Gets... One on one. The one on one time. Tom, Tom oh, gets down when, when everyone at the party says put the beads away. Yeah, um, it is, though. There, yeah. Can we go to Jen in Forestfield? Jen, tell us about your daughter. Oh, hi, guys. So my daughter blew her life savings on two VIP tickets two nights in a row. She's come home on cloud nine. She had a moment with Taylor in Willow and she wants to live it all again. And she says, Mum, look, the grandparents, you know, they'll be getting 10, 15 years max, let's face it. So just give me some early inheritance. Let's go to Canada in November, December. Let's go to Germany in July. She's literally online trying to find flights resale tickets to do it all again. Jen, do you know what happened? I had a friend who went along on Saturday night and she was so blown away by it. She rang me on the Sunday and she said, hey, is there any way you'd know how I can get two more tickets to go back again? I want to go back before she leaves. And I had to talk to her and say, look, the seats that are available now, or if you can get any, won't be as good as the ones you had last night. Mm. So you need to realise that your high was there. Yeah. And yeah. you don't need to chase the dragon. Don't be greedy. Last chase night, the dragon. Last night was the night, and you need to live in that moment Jen, and the high you've got from last night's concert. Jen, Jen, do you think you could stop your daughter from doing this? But do you honestly believe she'll jump on a flight and go over to Europe to see another one? Well, she's 15, and yeah. so no. Oh, no, she <laughs> and can't. And it is a small challenge of the finances, which is why she was trying to ask me to give her this. Yeah, you know what, Jen, <laughs> let's say you let your mind run, and you thought... Maybe we should. Let's just go like, crazy. Let's be crazy. I was tempted. Do you I know what, Jen? Because so I have should be. amnesia too. Because how many <laughs> times do you live, too. Jen? How many <laughs> times do you live? And we're getting old And you know what? One day, quickly. your daughter's not going to want to travel nope. with you. Tommy, no, we- that is true. <laughs> Tommy, where does it finish? Where does the eras tour finish? Oh, When's the what, the final gig? Oh, my because God. Oh she goes Singapore Fancy. now and then over to Europe. Mm. Um, because, uh, I mean, this is... Uh, it, uh, for the rest of the year, she'll be performing. I mean, so this ends up being a two-year world tour? Two years or over two years? Yeah. Do, so- we, do we somehow find tickets to the final era's world tour? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's or, we be- get a, or we get Kate's sweet seat I'm to happy. see. Oh I am God. happy to take one for the team and host mm-hmm. a suite wherever that is. That would be in Vancouver on <gasps> December the 8th. I've never been to the USA. I can do that the last USA. week I'd of the show to. on air. Let's take the team. <sighs> To Vancouver. Do you, do you know, Tommy, could we combine first class and 50K? Oh. You fly you and a mate first class to Canada oh, and imagine. you go and see her final show in Vancouver. We're going to take 10 lucky listeners what? to come oh. with us to Vancouver. Oh, oh, oh. I will. To see- 
Oh, do at you work, it's, a ta- come? it's a team effort, yeah. We're going to take 10 lucky <laughs> listeners yep. to fly with Fitzy yeah. Whipper and Kate to Vancouver, USA, to see... The final performance. Tom, mm-hmm. we, we'd that. have plenty of money because oh, we've, uh, we've got <laughs> we no budget. We can't even bud- get new merchandise. No, no, no. We've got no budget in the marketing this year on our show, so I dare say there'd be millions <laughs> up and over Slove. No, I saw us on a bus the other day, Tom. So oh, did that was you? What were you something. doing? I don't know. No, wasn't wasn't looking at my phone. I saw oh, us on the side of a bus. I'd and love I a TV that. commercial at some stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, look, sounds like ideas for off-air, but I will definitely <laughs> I will definitely raise it with whoever I talk to today. Taylor Swift's people, mate. Yeah. Straight onto it. I love that. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. I'm just reviewing this oh, yeah. brand new television show by the name of Married at First Sight. Tell me, have we still got our dinner party on? Are we going ahead with that? Or? Oh, yeah, we're going to announce that very soon, how you can win your way there, guys. Oh. Uh, it's coming up in a couple of weeks. I love that. Love oh, that. It's one of the, the highlights on your calendar, Kate. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, I think I joined the show around that time last year, and I really I was saying to management, please, just another yep. week off. Do you know what was missing well, from last year? <laughs> sure we, sure we. Remember Al? Al, who came along to the dinner. Oh, uh, so much fun. Two years ago. Classic. The fascination by people of these kind of characters or the people on the show mm. is incredible. At that dinner, yeah. everyone was glued and hanging off every word of like, is it Duncan and yeah, Evelyn? Yeah. Evelyn, I was going to say. Duncan and Evelyn, yeah. Are they real? That's the question that everyone asks. Are they actors? What's going on here? How dare you? I, I want to focus on a man by the name of Ben. Ben um, has been, well, he's been suited to Ellie. Yep. And look, they've had their ups and downs so far. It's been, as you say in the reality land, a journey for these two. A, uh, a bit of a roller coaster ride, Kate. Ben's, Ben's a bit of a different cat. Which is perfect ticks for any casting agent to get a bit of a different cat on the show. And poor Ellie, um, she was looking... Look, she's just looking for love. Yeah, yeah. You know, she just wants a guy that just can throw his arms around mm. her and embrace her and show her a little bit of love. But Ben's out there. Okay, so last night there was a massive blow-up because Ben's making an effort. He's been told by the experts, please sit down and tell her how you feel. Get back back in there and give it another go. So Ben went back and everything was fine. They were getting along really well, Kate. And then at the end of the show last night, all of a sudden, there's panic station. Oh, cameras no. going everywhere. Ben's been told, get out of the house. Ellie said, get out of here. I'm sick of you. And then the, the producers sat Ellie down and said, Ellie, what, what, what just happened? And she said, well, he just gave me a list of things that he didn't like about me. And she said, I wrote them down. Have a listen. So I took notes. Um, he didn't like that I applied makeup because he's used to dating girls that don't wear a lot. He didn't like the fact that I was 32 and he's 39. He reckons there's a generational gap. <laughs> He didn't like the fact that I was from the Gold Coast. That's fair. Um, He didn't like that I was sensitive or emotional. Um, And he would also like good conversation from me. Apparently he's not getting good conversation. Mm. Was there a do-like list or is that just... Just so eggs. it's pretty. He said, it's that's shattering, isn't it? I know. If, I know. Um, you know, either try, or uh, as my mum used to say, if yeah. you don't have anything nice to say, don't, don't say, say anything, anything at all. Well, then then they throw to Ben, and Ben's out in. The- <laughs> Ben's a bit of a different cat. Ben goes, look, I can understand. I had to be honest with her. But then have a a listen how he finishes this. It's okay to get emotional. But time, how do you have a good conversation? So it it is quite challenging. I want to finish my dinner. I haven't eaten much because I've had this tooth through. So I'm only just starting to eat. So it's horrendous timing. Well, it's fine for you to get upset, but I mean, I really hate it when a girl cries. Yeah, and you're trying to get through teeth. your schnitzel. Ben, oh. you know what I mean? ben then decides, Kate, <laughs> what's the way to get back into her heart? I'm going to grab the old axe, the guitar, <laughs> and I'm going to write her a song. 
Oh no! Oh god, this is <laughs> making my body. I'm having like little <laughs> feeling, like awkward feeling in my I body. Love this stuff. Oh, love you should. This stuff. You should because this this is set up even better by the voiceover woman on the show. Have a listen to this. After disappearing on Ellie following the commitment ceremony. <laughs> Ben has taken the first step to win back wife Ellie, writing her a song. I've been unaware of my f***ed up behaviours Until you pointed them out on the couch And I just want to say thanks If, if is in this doubt... A, is, this, is he taking the... No, he's not. If in doubt, get out the sixth string. He's not. Now, this is 13, oh 20, 14. Have you, ha, has there been a song, have you written a song for someone or has there been a song written for you in a relationship before? Oh, I love these. I love this stuff so much. Oh, I, ha- I hate all this stuff. I, oh. Even people who sing at their own weddings and it's stuff. It's a little bit of... I'm like, oh my God, don't, please. There's don't. a little bit of Ricky Gervais in the office about it, isn't it? Yes. He went home to get it. Well, we, we spoke to Andy Lee about this, remember? He wrote a song with Lily Allen. Well, when they interviewed Lily, Lally, Lily yeah. Allen. Yeah, remember? Have we got that in the system, Tommy? Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't we play it? Should we play it after the traffic? Okay. Get some calls on. That was a big reveal for Andy yeah. Lee because we'd, we'd read that there was um, a moment where him and Lily spent some time together. Did and they? Then... I didn't know that. Is that true? Did yeah. Andy Lee go have have relations with <laughs> Lily Allen? Yeah, that was that was Did well they? known. That do you was know what Whip was doing? Whip Don't was do like that. Playing charades here with me, and I think it was more than a drink. No, that was kissing. I think they had a kiss. If you're kissing like that, <laughs> you need a. If you're right. kissing like that, you should be in jail. Yes. 13, 24, 10. <laughs> Love to know. I just kissed her. <laughs> Love to know if there's been a song written in your relationship. Imagine singing a song with your partner nah, at you the wouldn't, time. You wouldn't do oh, Lenny, just play it right now. Yeah. Well, there was something you would do or Whipper with his ex girlfriend. Your whole, your whole body is shaking when you laugh. So don't laugh like that because you're you're do you taking over it, your entire do you, body. Do you want to hear it again, oh, Kate? Yes, I do. <laughs> We never did too much talking anyway. We never did too much talking anyway. Is that a joke? What a great song. Is that a joke? I just don't... I actually feel a bit sick to the stomach this morning. (laughs) Why is that? Well, because Ben's fine. Do you need that as a ringtone? I don't know Ben. I don't know Ben. And he's doing exactly what the maths producers are hoping for. Yeah. And then you do it. And then I hear about... I I actually feel so disappointed about the Andy Lee stuff. (laughs) What do you mean? Well, you know, you're going to hear Andy's very soon. Let's go to Adam in Campbelltown. You performed a song for your wife, Adam. Yeah, that's right. Where, where, saying, where yeah. at? Uh, at our wedding. Oh, oh, that's so oh, lovely, yeah. Adam. <laughs> was it an original, yeah, yeah. Adam? You wrote the lyrics? No, no. I was, I was, we actually tried to get Diesel to perform at our wedding, but he, he wasn't available. Johnny so Diesel. I sang, um, yeah, I sang uh, Tip of My Tongue to my oh, wife. So right so you, you, on the tip of my tongue. So you tongue. got on the Diesel and did it yourself, Adam. That's how, it. How did yeah. you go? I found it pretty good, I reckon. My wife, yeah, my wife loved it. Uh, yeah, no, can't didn't. complain. It was uh, pretty, pretty good, I think, uh, compared to Ben. That was atrocious. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about, what, did you like Weep's performance, Adam? Oh, that was a bit. It was good. It was good. Why did you do that? Um, Because um, I just recorded a song when I was 16 with my girlfriend because I got a four track for Christmas and I was playing a lot of guitar, man, at the time. I was going through quite a sort of a hippie era. Were you 16 in that? Yeah. Oh, that's okay then. What, did you think it was last week? I didn't know. It's unbelievable that that relationship didn't last. I wouldn't mind recording another version with you. Oh, we will never see oh, together. Could. It takes two. All right, Jane and Dural, hello. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good. Good. Who, who wrote the song for you, Jane? So, um, a couple of years back, I was in a musical with a mate, and we became pretty good friends, and i that's just all I thought it was. And then he, in one of our rehearsals, he busted out the ukulele, and... Um, 
sung an original song that he wrote for me awesome. in a room full of people. Oh. It had three verses. Oh. Um, and oh. he didn't know that I'm actually not interested in boys in any way, shape, or form. Great. So it was one of the most awkward moments oh, of my so life. So he's banging his head against the brick wall. Oh, no. Jane, what about the Jane. moment the song finished? Did everybody clap? And did you pretend no. to be in tears oh. or anything? No one clapped. They all kind of went, oh, that was really good, mate. But no one really oh. knew what to do. What, did, what Does he know all the details now that it was a waste yeah. of time? I had to pull him aside and kind of say, look, I think you're really nice, but um, i I got to tell you something. <laughs> Oh my yeah. gosh, Jane! What a be- I would have. I would pay to be in the room. I would pay to be in the room. Credit no, to anyone that does do that. Like seriously, if some kid yeah. at school is pulling out the ukulele and singing a song, you can't be cruel to that no, person because that takes. No. I mean, they are lost in the moment. It could. It could cripple them for the rest mm. of their life. Should we jump to the Andy Lee song for Lily Allen? Fitz? I don't know if I want to yeah. hear um, this. because I'm not sure. I can't go into all the details about what actually happened between the two of them, but I certainly know they caught up for a drink. So they must have had some common interests and after that moment forward, Andy Wallace. thought to re-engage, maybe the best invitation would be through song. Oh no. What do you mean he, he wrote it for real of a song? Think, and when did yeah. he pre- when did he present it to her? Uh, I think he must have emailed it to her, Fitz, because she'd left yeah. the country. Yeah. So she'd continued on tour or gone back to the UK. So Ando flicked it to her. Oh, so let's, she let's, have let's, let's have a listen. Now I'm sure you're with another And you left me here to wonder What it is that fills your days Well I just hope that you are happy Your whole there's, body's shaking again There's a longer bit, do you want to hear trying not to laugh on the radio. Every time I hear your smile Well it reminds me of our day from the first of them, we would seem to laugh like we'd known each other always. That's true. And have you thought of me since you left this place? About just once entered your it's building. mind. It's a bit country and western. You can play it cool and say you hadn't missed you. And simply be alive. Fly it. Now I'm sure you will sing, sing along if you know the words. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Kate Ritchie. Theme Queen. Ah, oh, welcome to another round of Theme Queen. Mm-hmm. Non plural. Mm-hmm. Just, Just the one, one, Just one queen. Yeah. Only one yes. Here in the studio. Apparently, I'm a gold winning, uh, gold Logie winning actress and radio personality, and I am in charge. I can't believe you wrote that. For the, I didn't. For the next couple of minutes, apparently, I have to read it out. Just read it off the sheet. Every week. Okay. We know how the game works by now. We've settled in. The game is very simple. There are three rounds. In each round, there are three songs, yep. and each of those three songs. Songs are connected by a theme. Okay, so it. just listen to the lyrics. All you have to do is work out what connects them. Um, give me an answer, mm-hmm. and then you okay. take out that round. Yeah, right. Do you want an answer straight away? No. You want us to hold oh, fits, especially in this first round, because okay. I like to warm you up in round number one. It's going to be relatively simple. Yeah. But sit yeah. back and just enjoy. Okay. Here we go. Round number one. Song number one. Okay, water protection. <laughs> Weather. Stay out of it. Song, song number two. <laughs> songs to keep you dry. <laughs> oh, you never know. Hold on, mate. Don't jump in. Don't song jump two. In. It's raining. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that one's okay. for you, Tommy. What the, oh, this was started one. with a hard one first. <laughs> well, look, I never know <laughs> how awake you blokes are. Um, and song number three, mm-hmm. what do you think it's going to be? Something to do with precipitation. Now have a think, is guys. It to do, is it to nah. do with trains? <laughs> yeah. uh. Okay, hurry up. One of you just oh, answer. Each song has, they all have a beat behind them. Yes, okay, yes. you get it. The killer. Of course the theme is rain. Moving on to a slightly more difficult <laughs> oh, What a battle that was. But do you know what? There might be kids in the car listening. Yeah. They haven't yep. heard the game before and they are feeling like a winner, okay? Even babies can play along with that one. Even Leno. 
Um, oh, he's I, just, <laughs> hang on, he's short, but I he's not a baby. I mean in stature. Oh, my, Len, I'm sorry about her, mate. Uh, round number two. Oh, no, I need your help with this, Leno. I'll take all of that back. Song number one. <laughs> in round number two. Oh, he's refusing to fire it off <laughs> in protest. I'm sorry. Okay. One Direction Crazy? Is it? What's the name of the song? Crazy? I don't know. That's up to no. you. Okay. Here we go. Listen. Okay. Yep. Song number two. This life is a party. I'll never know what else was a kid. All I had was a dream. What is that? I have that? never heard this. I mean, it's a mashup. Song so four. Who is that? I have no idea. Someone could. Chitty Bang. Yeah, Chitty Bang. Chitty Bang Bang. My favourite. That's my favourite Chitty Bang song. Slightly different to Chingy, one of my favourite mm. artists. Um, okay, let's not listen to a single second more of that and listen to song number three. Okay. They're Come all, on, quick. All young artists. Under 20. No. So They're you've got live, live While We're Young and When I Grow Up. So is it a, And the songs? song by Chitty Bang is called <laughs> the Chitty Bang uh, Opposite of Adults. Kids. So is it a song, Is the theme is puberty? No. Teenagers. <laughs> kind uh, of like... Adolescence. Growing, it's growing up. Yes, growing up. Growing up. Yeah. Growing up. Yeah. I think that was a tie, mm-hmm. which kind of makes this a tiebreaker, mm-hmm. guys. Round yeah. number three, song number one. Choir. Guy Sebastian, Choir. Yes. If you don't know that song, there's something wrong with you. Okay, song number two in round number three. Rita Ora. I love this song. So Guy Sebastian... Rita Ora, and coming in now with song number three. Firework, a choir, and take me anywhere. They're all judges on the voice. No. I'm looking at Emma's face in the newsroom there. Did you have any idea? You got an idea, Emma. I, oh, I was g- along the lines of um, Fitz, but more saying um, contest host, not the voice. No. Okay, I'm going to have to give you a clue here. Yeah, I need a clue. Go. Where did we see Guy Sebastian, Rita Ora and Katy Perry over... They all went to tell us which. Yes, they oh. Another great round of Theme Queen. Fitzy, I think, is still undecided. <laughs> the jury is out. We'll play again next week. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. I just thought before we ended the show, I'd, I'd like to give you a little piece of information that uh, might make you feel better about a bit of a come down, about a bit of uh, about having to sit with yourself yeah. and your own, own emotions um, and, and, and being worried about the fact that you might be bored. It's actually a really good thing to be bored is and it? to kind of have nothing to do because what it can right. do... What that that it must do? be, I must be feeling really good at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, sitting next to old mate every Hey, what? I've got so many good stories. Um, it's a good emotion for humans as it can be channeled into developing new new skills. Apparently, this bit of info for you, music icon Jimi Hendrix used boredom to, boredom to transform an ordinary musician yeah. into a guitar genius. Wow. So he was bored and he went, what will I do now? Yeah. Become the best guitarist in the world. You can ha- you have time to set new goals. Do you know so don't you- be worried about not being able to see Taylor Swift again until we all go to Canada at the end of the year. Yeah, do we all do that trip? You know, yesterday Jack was home from school. He had a cough. Anyway, he was there and he said, Dad, I'm bored. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I said, well, why don't you do, I don't know, do you want to do some drawing? He said, why don't I, why don't I design some shoes? And I went, oh, well, why not? That's a That's great not idea. Bad. Yeah. So, so we printed out some templates, all right, on the printer. Just from Google yeah, Images. Yeah. We wanted to call them Jack Jumpers. Were they loafers? Oh, no, they already, were already used Tasmanian. Are they? What are they? 
Yeah, the Tasmanian Jack Jumpers. That's the NBL term. Is it? All yeah. right. Um, okay. Well, let's just call them Jacks. You're right. Yeah. Um, I'll have to inform him of that because we tried to register it yesterday. Um, so he spent the afternoon designing different shoes. And Here's how? the toe of the shoe. This is what the side will look like. And then he said, "Great, right. let's contact China and get them made." He said, "We need to that get. Is... Well, I need to get everyone's size so that the whole family can have a pair of Jack Jumpers." But I think you've missed the point of being still. And just having... Well, that's where it turned to. Yeah, okay. He so he did develop a new skill. Okay. Something new. Because it's without him bad. being bored in that moment, that would have never happened. And now he runs a shoe empire. <laughs> well, it's mm-hmm. you could start your own with Jack as well. Yeah. And what you contribute to the show and call him Jack... Sh- I did see that was lazy. <laughs> that was um, really very, lazy. Very un- and that is not what I wanted at the end of the show. Yes. I wanted to be inspiring no. people he, in their day. Well, and you know what? Oh, do you know what I want to say? I'm if bored. you're bored, I mean, lucky you. Do you know, I've found the best thing. No, I know what you mean, Kate. <laughs> no, can someone support me yeah, here? I am. I'd well, love to be bored. Yeah. Can I tell you what yeah. to do today if you're bored? <laughs> Go to Kate Ritchie's Instagram page and have a look at the montage of people uh, of, of Home and Away and scenes of people telling Sally to go away. Oh, did you oh, watch is that? It's oh, so mate. sad. I don't know who had the time to pick apart every episode well, where someone great, told Sally to go away. great account called Home and Away. Early Years. Oh, my God, it's and funny. It's, I mean, they do so many it is great so clips, but this is two minutes ten. Can I come, guys? everyone telling Sally to go away. To basically go away. There's, a great, really. moment. There's a great moment where there's just two, two people standing on a beach and they go, is there any chance we could talk in private and then they pan out and Sally's just standing next to them hanging off like a bad smell yeah in an oversized t-shirt and a bad hair <laughs> you weren't even supposed to be in the scene that day <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys laugh about it what but about? do you know what it did oh, it made yeah. me kind of feel joyful to start with and then I wanted to cry yeah. what about the one where they go is it Tom and Pippa when Tom Michael. Said, Michael Tom died Tom sorry Tom. Michael says to Pippa <laughs> Well, should we take Sal? Do you think it'd be better if we, we took, took Sal, Sal with us and then Pippa... <laughs> this is a slight pause and Pippa goes, no. <laughs> Can we get that Oh, what, you know what my favourite oh. bit? You're not going to have to watch it now. When Pippa's being put in the back of an ambulance... That's right. And Sally's, like, running up going, Pippa. but Pippa, Pippa, she's going, no, Sal, you stay here. <laughs> Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Play. Via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.